Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the uh, rekeying aspect of a uh, Siegel double cylinder lock. I've got one here on my desk, and we're going to go over it. The reason I'm making this video is because we sell Siegel locks often. We generally don't get into any key work at all in terms of the material um, because they're just ordered in single locks, single lock units, and the client doesn't really need or think to need uh, rekeying capabilities. I had a client ordered three double cylinder deadbolts, wanted them all keyed alike with six keys total, sent the order to Siegel, who is owned by Primeline, so if I use the name Siegel and Primeline, consider them interchangeably. Um, Primeline said, we don't do that anymore. Okay ship them to me, I'll re them and then send them off to the client, rather than tell the client, sorry, we can't accommodate your request. Um, you know, so there you go. I've already keyed one and found that there were some, found that it was less clear cut and wanted to make a video so that I could not only recall for myself in the future how I did it, which isn't very difficult, but to be able to show you if you want to get into doing it uh, yourself. There's going to be several pauses in this video just as I go about starting, stopping, you're not going to watch me unscrew screws to go through it. So here's the inside body and what we're going to do is we're going to rekey that cylinder. The first thing that we're going to do is remove these two screws so that we can get the back plate off with the shutter cover uh, off uh, as well. I'm going to grab my screwdriver here for doing that. The camera that's here that you can see here, I will use this uh, hopefully with great greater um, uh, effect so that you can have a couple of views. I'm going to pause the video, tilt the primary camera down so we can start working on this lock that's on my desk. Okay, so we've got a tilted down camera view uh, that's happening there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, like I said, we're going to remove these two screws that are here and use a use a well-fitting screwdriver for doing this. Don't use one that's um, ill-fitted for the task because you don't want to strip the screws and in my experience screws are put in very tightly in my impression overly tight unnecessarily tight that's probably because they're done with you know machinery involved and not being done necessarily by hand so a good screwdriver lots of force and you'll get that screw out with with real good success so we're gonna unscrew these two screws We're going to remove the rear cover. Two screws, put those to the side. The rear cover is simply going to, you can just lift that out however you want to, just lift it out. Okay, that's your rear cover right there. Now, the bottom line is you've got some moving parts in there. And the issue is this. Don't be, you're going to disturb the moving parts. That's just the reality of the situation. You're going to disturb them. This video is going to give you the confidence of how to put it back together because it is really simple and straightforward how this all goes back together. I am literally going to intentionally remove the cam bar that's here, but I'm going to hold my finger down on, there's a spring here and you'll see it. And all I want to do is really get it off the post that's there. And as soon as I lift it, it comes out my finger is still controlling the spring that's down there. And I'm going to show you that as soon as I put the cam bar down. There's the spring. Okay, Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to put it back together. If they snap out, they pop out, which they will if you attempt to do this, we're going to put it back together without trouble. Okay, I've got my cam bar, my spring. Then all that you have left really is this locking bolt that's here. You can remove that if you want. It's really not going to go anywhere. Um, you can leave it in there if you like as well. It might be, you know, moving in your way. Just, I would suggest literally removing it. You'll notice that there's a pin here. And when you're taking something apart, you know, do a visual roadmap of the item so that you can kind of remember how they go back together because I'm sure obtaining a parts diagram of this would be next to impossible from Primeline. Not that they would be unwilling to send it to you, it just probably doesn't exist. Now at this point, what you're faced with is the C-ring and the tailpiece. That C-ring that's on there, just quite frankly and simply, needs to be popped off. 
the bottom line is it's really not intended to come off and we will end up needing channel locks to get it back on to crimp it back down over the back side of the cylinder okay and it's it is anything but easy to really get that off because really what you have to do is kind of just bend it out any way that you really can and I realize my camera angle is going to be lousy for doing this but all I'm really doing is pulling down this one side here and getting it to bend over I'm just really trying to pull that down is all I'm trying to do okay so I'm going to complete pulling that down and at that point I've got it pretty pulled off where I can sneak, sneak my screwdriver in there or my, my little uni, unisex tool and just pull that clip off. Now it's a piece of spring steel and um, the key is you really don't want to deform it. And I've really not deformed it at all but in my opinion these are not meant to come off repeatedly on and off I think is going to be problematic because you'll fatigue the, the material itself. So at that point we've got everything ready to go. That C-clip is going to have to sit down. Do not lose that or don't lose any parts or you're going to have trouble. Now at this point <clears throat> we've got difficulty in the sense that uh, the tail piece needs to be eased off because and I almost got to the point where I was going to tell the client I, it can't be done because what Siegel has done in the manufacturing process is they've flared over some of these edges and I realize you can't see it but they've taken it and they've flared them down to, to really prevent the uh, potential for this tailpiece working its way off over years. Now it can be removed and all I'm really going to do is just walk it up and off so that it comes off and I'm just going to use my little pointed tool to do that and you'll notice that when you're trying to do this you do need to work it around in you know around the unit itself uh, you know to, to lift it up in like quadrants so that you can begin to ease it because really you're, what you're trying to do is get it up and over those flared over ends but you want to do it without deforming it and I've got it partially rocked off but I don't I don't want to take it to the point where I run the risk of deforming anything because again I don't think these parts are really meant to come off so in this camera I just give that a little more motivation and it'll be rocked off and it is deformed right now but you can see how it's got a little giddy up to it the fact of the matter is that's how it is uh, from the factory okay it's not flat the flared upside was pointed towards the top and it's not obvious on the camera but it will be when you look at it so when you put it back down together make sure that it flares up and towards you okay now at this point what we have is nothing nothing left it's just the back side of the cylinder now it's the point to enter uh, the, the stage of removal where you use your plug follower and let's start with that next. Okay, so what I've done is uh, really nothing except I, I did want to point out these two screws that are here and here. If you wanted to physically remove the cylinder from its housing you would remove those two screws. I see no reason to do it myself. It just is extra work. However, it might be easier for you to handle the transition between the key blank and the plug follower. Now the point of the matter is this, you see that on the back of the cylinder you've got those preparations, those slots that are there in all four quadrants. When you run your plug follower through you're going to have to have the key turned at 45 degree so that you're running the top pins over that area, not over a uh, slotted area because you don't want the pins to get hung up. At this point it will be not easy to push the plug follower through and I think that's just a response to kind of the, the way that the, everything's been machined. Okay, I'm going to tip the camera up a little bit here because I'll be holding it in my hand at this point. So now we're just going to, I'm going to use the palm of my hand to control the key which is in the cylinder. 
I've got it turned at a reasonable 45 degree. I'm going to begin by pushing my plug follower through. And it's it does not go in smoothly because those machines have, or those parts have not been machined to be polished. They've just been made to work. Okay, and I've got it out to where I was able to overcome a rough spot in the back side of the plug. I can then push hopefully the plug follower through. I can tell that I'm encountering some sort of resistance on the inside of the cylinder. It might be a top pin wanting to jump down a little bit. Okay. And because that's all not machined very elegantly, the plug follower really needs to be pushed through. But what I've noticed here is that I only have four pins in my cylinder, and it's drilled five. Now the question is, is that normal? Is there a pin and a spring in the top section of the fifth, uh, of the fifth chamber? So we can inspect that by pushing the plug follower all the way through. And I'm going to look at it first then show you on the camera. So there was definitely a pin in that fifth chamber or in the last chamber and the first one has it as well. The point I'm trying to make is this it must be that the cylinder, and I'm just discovering this now, the cylinder is drilled five, but it's only pinned four. That's what it has to be. So what I'm going to do now is when I pulled, when I pushed my plug follower through to reveal that hole, that fourth chamber that's in there, which you can't see, and the spring is still sitting in there. I can see the top of it. I'm going to put that back with my tweezers. So I'm going to hold the pin and the tweezers like this, put it back into that chamber, push it down, but then I'm going to get it partially the way in and I'm pushing on my plug follower and then I'm going to push the pin down and get it to push back through. And as I push my old cylinder plug, my plug follower through this hole, it's warped. It's, I've, I've owned this for probably 20 years so it's got a lot of miles on it and it does not work very smoothly. The key of the matter is this, when you rekey this cylinder, don't put a bottom pin down into that chamber. Because there's no top drilled plug for it. I suppose it really wouldn't matter to have it because it can't rise up into a hole, but you're only going to redo what was there. And this had just those five pins, or those four pins in that five pin drilled cylinder. Okay, now I like to periodically wipe the hands off because you'll accumulate grease on it. What I'm going to do at this point is simply load my bottom pins into the cylinder plug and then pick it up when I'm putting everything back into. How to pin a lock is a different video. So I've got my new key here that I'm keying everything to and I've got it loaded with four new pins at the proper height. Now at this point, you need to push this Siegel cylinder back in at 45 degree because what will happen is if you approach it head on like this, the first thing you're going to do is that first top pin is going to suck down into this fifth hole that's drilled in the cylinder plug and then you're, then it's, then you're stuck. This is crucial. You just need to do it the right way and if you do, it's smooth. You'll notice that my plug follower is oriented so that I've got constant coverage at the top, meaning I don't have it like this, okay, where I'm going to have that same problem. It's got to be like this. I've got it pushed flush. The problem is the front of my plug follower is tight in the hole and it will take effort to push it through, but you've got to keep that 
cylinder when you push it in at a 45 degree angle. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but, but you have to. Otherwise, it's going to be a disaster. Okay, I've got it started in. And all you do now, my palm of this hand is controlling the plug follower so that there becomes no void between the back of the cylinder plug and the plug follower itself. And I was able to push here and release here, allowing no void between the face of this and the back side of this so that there's no trouble. If you've pinned the cylinder correct, that's going to work super smooth. Absolutely, absolutely test your key. Test all of your keys if, if it's the first cylinder to make sure that the operation is smooth and perfect. The way I like to think of it is, imagine you got uh, someone who's worked all day and just wants to get home and doesn't want to have to contend with a, mil, a, a malfitting key. They don't want to have key rage. Pin it so that it's smooth and perfect. These Siegel locks will last decades, and they'll only last decades if they're not destroyed otherwise. And you don't want to give someone a reason to be angry with their lock. Make sure you pin it real nice, super smooth. So I've got the I've got the plug back in there, and I know that my keys are good because this is the second one I've already keyed, meaning the copies that I've made are good, good, accurate copies. At this point, we're going to re, uh, we are going to uh, start the process over. I didn't note it out, but the tailpiece can either be on this side or on this side, and indeed it was on this side, and that's where that mental image comes in when you're putting things back together. Time to tip that camera down. And hopefully the side camera here is going to help. And again, it's just really going to be a situation of working that tailpiece down so that it works, and you just need to get it in on an angle and slide it around this way. And you'll you'll probably take note that you can see that I've got the flare pointed up and that it's pointed to the proper side that it was. Now at this point, putting the C-clip back on is just how you get it back on. And I'm going to just stick it on here so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then really it's just a matter of getting it pushed down and on to the unit. Now what tool you use to do that I've pushed it down that far. What tool you use to do that really doesn't matter. Uh, someone who's done key work long enough, you do have your favorite tools for doing everything. I like the back side of this crescent wrench because I can get it in there and literally just leverage it and push it down. And that's what I just did. I just pushed it down. The C-clip just you know, was spread apart and then snapped back down. Now, because my opinion that these C-clips are not meant to be opened and closed like that, and it's really not closed very well, or at least you would not leave it that way. That C-clip, the inner part of the C-clip had two little prongs that are fitting into those two slots here and here. You want to make sure that those are seated, but what I do at this point is I will grab my channel lock and I'm going to pinch that C-clip back down. And I can always make sure that I've got it put back together very well. And then once you've got that C-clip pinched back down, I'll hold my finger over it so we can just study the one end. It's just going to fit real nice inside of there. And you've pinched it down, but you don't want to grab the back of the cylinder plug itself because you don't want to break any of that. Just pinch the C-clip back down and over it is all that you're going to do. Then at that point, you've got a very smoothly operating lock to the point where all you're going to do now is just uh, reassemble the balance of the material. Let's move, forgive me, let's tilt that camera back down again. You're going to put your, you recall that that pin was up top because there's not one on the other side of this, just on the top side. That'll go down. You can rest it in there any way that you like because all it really does is just slide back and forth. Okay. Now here's the part that's important. You got that little giddy up there in the spring. The long part and the giddy up's got to face towards the top. There's only one place for the elbow to go, and that's down on this pin. So there's really only one way to put it together. That, this flat side here is going to rest here. So that goes like that. And that's what the spring looks like.
the little giddy up portions face towards the top. You've got the hole down through the pin, and then that little hook portion here is just floating up in the top there. Now, we're almost ready to go. This is goes under the flat port of that giddy up portion of the spring. And I all I'm really doing here is just taking this portion here, the the hole, putting it down over the pin. The little arm goes in that raised area of the spring. My finger is holding it down. And I'm gonna just pull that down. And what I've done is that other side of the of the spring that had the little hook on it, it's literally now controlling the control arm. Okay, is what it's doing. And that's the proper way that this goes back on. So I'm going to hold that there up in the camera so that you can take a good long study at it. And frankly, there's only one way for those parts to go back in so that they operate correctly. And it's all loose in there until you put the shutter, uh, the back plate back on. And sure, it's jumped out on me. That's, that's no problem. I just push it down and push it back together. So when the tailpiece rotates, it will depress down on this flat portion, pushing it down, allowing you to slide it over and locking it. And that motion is what locks and unlocks the bolt. Okay. Then finally, your cover will go back on, the little tag here, or the little spring tab, then your two screws finish it off and that's that's the installation or that's the rekeying aspect of a Siegel double cylinder lock. Sorry that this video is long winded but it will serve as gosh I've lost these pieces and I have no I, I, the pieces jumped out and I have no way to put them back together that's how you do it. If you have any questions on rekeying a prime line or a Siegel double cylinder surface mounted deadbolt or any other Siegel product please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.